as always, you get different responses depending on the nature of the broker and their business. For a lot of brokers, it's still not relevant because their core business is, remains, and probably will remain primarily writing residential mortgages or investment property mortgages. And peer-to-peer -peer lenders, with rare exception, don't compete with the major banks when it comes to the plain vanilla offerings. However, those brokers who are looking to or have diversified their business, who are possibly catering for small personal loan circumstances, business loans, or those loans that are hard to place, for those who have started down the journey, they seem to be having a very good reception and their feedback has been positive. I never believe that the role of a broker will be redundant because a certain number of people will always want an interface with a human. They'll need somebody to hold their hand, somebody to talk to, somebody to explain, and maybe even somebody to fill in the application form. And that won't go away in a tech world. Diversification in and of itself is nothing more than a buzzword. Yes, it's a wonderful thing to offer more than one service, one, more than one product offering. It's good for the client and it's good for the broker's business, but not if it's done haphazardly or with a lack of expertise. I advocate strongly that within a group, one becomes an expert in, say, commercial lending, another one becomes in residential, another one may look at, at, at the peer-to-peer -peer offerings that are there, and each one complements the skills of the other. But just to diversify for diversification's sake and to become a jack of all trades and a master of none is not, in my view, adding real value to the client, and as a result won't ultimately land up adding much value to the broker's business. I would be surprised and disappointed if the review concluded that we would need to change and dis or abolish um, the trail commission system. Greg Medcroft and his band of merry men and women at ASIC are no fools. They don't seek to intervene and interfere with payment arrangements unless they're trying to, to out some evil. And the perceived evil might be that brokers are incentivized through the current payment arrangements to favor one funder, one bank, one lender over another. And I think that once an inquiry is done and they understand fully the way that payments are structured, they'll see there's no real bias to go with one bank or funder over another. Moreover, when you think about the way that commissions are structured, I actually think they're very good. There's a lot of work to be done up front but the bank equally has a big cost or the funder of putting that loan on their books. They don't want to see that churned away and moved just arbitrarily somewhere else because there's only a small gain. So it's worth their while to pay the broker to put that loan in place or to, to introduce it. And then it's worth paying them something to make sure that they look after the client and they regularly service the client so it remains there. If you look at the ratio, Let's say a broker earns 0.6 of a percent upfront and earns 0.15 percent in trail. That means that they have to keep that loan for four years in place before they've earned as much as the upfront. But the combined value of that makes it attractive to the broker. If there was no trail, then the client or the funder would have to pay a larger amount upfront in order for the broker to continue to survive. If you simply cut trail commissions and left brokers with an upfront, or even cut the upfront and left a fee, I don't think a lot of brokers would survive. Many of the more marginal ones would go to the wall. That cannot be good for an industry where you want a good distribution, where you want to encourage um, funding and lending from outside of the big four. So I'd be very surprised if we saw a wholesale change to the way that brokers are remunerated. What you're seeing is an increasing share of business being won by brokers, but not an increasing number of brokers. Not when you look at the figures, say MFAA membership, and therefore what that's saying to me is, fewer brokers are writing more business. 
the, the big are getting bigger and stronger and they are writing more business because they are developing their expertise. And in many ways, that's because the banks have welcomed that of late. When I go into my local high street bank today, it looks nothing like the bank that I walked into five years ago. Tellers used to stand in lines behind glass and, and, and heaven forbid I put my arm through, a, it would come down and drop down on my arm. Today they stand at tables, there's maybe one or two people in the branch. They design to only cater for the exceptional things. And the banks have discovered that in order to take their costs down, they want to make people engage with them as electronically as possible. Well, brokers fill that gap wonderfully. When a broker is busy and writing loans, they get paid. And when they're not, they're not a fixed overhead. The banks have been able to outsource that overhead. And therefore, there's an environment to allow good brokers to continue to grow. So what the brokers, that, to answer your question, need to do is to continue to, in their own way, consolidate, get good at particular expertise, find niches, and grow so that they fill the gaps that the banks have left for them. Well, I actually don't recommend people sell their trail books unless they have to. And many in the, in the, in, in the listening to this would might think I'm mad, but they're wonderful assets to own. And it's when we do um, polls, we find that for every person who's looking to sell a trail book, there are six buyers looking to buy. So in fact, yes, there comes a time when a person wants to hang up their spurs, they want to move on, they may have financial need to do it, but I don't necessarily encourage selling a good asset like that, particularly one that has a good yield and a recurring predictable income stream in favor of what? Unless somebody goes, there's something I can do with that money that's a lifestyle or a financial benefit greater than I've got today, I'd say don't sell them. Thank you.